Welcome to the 35th lecture in mechanics of materials. The last lecture we started looking at stability induced failure. In particular, we analyze an ideal column. Okay. What I mean by ideal column is a column which is prismatic, straight, the load acting through the center of gravity of the cross section without any eccentricity in the load applied and things like that. Okay. We will provide more detailed explanations in this lecture on what an ideal column is. Okay. We said that we have to write the equilibrium equations in the deformed shape. Consequently, there arises more than one solution that is possible when you write the equilibrium equation in the deformed shape. Okay. We took an example of a simply supported column, we analyzed it and we found that two solutions are possible for certain critical loads. Okay. For certain loads which we call as critical loads, in particular for a minimum critical load given by pi square e by lambda, the lambda is L by R minimum square that is the direction in which the minimum radius of gyration occurs okay, squared. Okay. Then in that case your critical load is given by pi critical stress is given by pi square e by lambda square is called as all a critical stress buckling stress okay. and then this was derived for a simply supported column basically. Okay. Now, let us see how to get this all a critical load for a different boundary conditions of the beam. Okay. First, let us look at a cantilever beam, say I have a cantilever column subject to an axial force P. Okay. Now, what happens is the procedure is the same as a force acting P like that. Now, this would have deformed into some shape like this okay, and the load would act continue to act perpendicular to the in, in the horizontal direction okay. and if I were to say this displacement is absolute value of delta y okay. and if I do a section analysis if I cut a section here if I cut a section there okay, then I will have P here, P here, okay, and let us say this tip displacement is delta y max. Let us say the tip displacement was delta max y max, okay. So, now this distance would be this distance would be delta y max minus absolute value of delta y right minus absolute value of delta y okay this is also an absolute value of delta y max okay now then the moment is this produces a clockwise moment so i'll have anti clockwise moment coming in here okay so i'll have anti clockwise moment mz which is p times delta y max absolute value minus delta y absolute value. Okay. Now, uh, I go back to my governing equation bending equation which tells me that e times i z z to d square delta y by d x square must be equal to m z which is this is a negative moment here. So, I will have minus p times absolute value of delta y max minus absolute value of delta y. Okay. Now, I know it is a downward displacement, so delta y is negative. Okay. So, this will be minus or minus minus plus p times delta y max minus delta y because both delta y max and delta y are in the negative direction both I have to put a negative sign I pull that negative sign out it will become positive. Okay. So, I have the equation e times i z z d square delta y by d x square is that. Okay. As before this equation boils down to d square delta y by d x square 
plus k square times delta y is equal to k square times delta y max. Okay. Delta y max. Okay. So basically for this the solution is delta y is again given by C1 cos kx plus C2 sin kx plus k square delta y max no, plus delta y max okay plus delta y max okay now i substitute the boundary conditions the boundary conditions by the end a being fixed and end b being free are delta y at x equal to 0 must be equal to 0 and d delta y by dx at x equal to 0 must be equal to 0. Okay. This will tell us that C1 uh, delta y at x equal to 0 is C1 plus delta y max this has to be equal to 0 okay. and then delta y at x equal to d delta y by dx at x equal to 0 at x equal to 0 will give us C2 k to be 0 okay. which means k is not 0 because k is a load which is applied which is non zero value it depends upon the load that is applied by the way k here again means square root of p by e times i z z okay so k is not zero so c2 has to be zero from here you get the condition that c2 has to be zero and c1 is minus delta y max okay so combining these things results combining these results you have delta y to be given by delta y max into 1 minus cos kx right okay i substitute c to 0 and c1 is minus delta y max but i want to use the fact that i use the condition that delta y at delta y at x equal to l is equal to delta y max okay that's a condition i have used because delta y max is delta y at x equal to l right so if i apply that boundary condition now i'll get that delta y max into 1 minus cos kx must be equal to kl must be equal to delta y max okay this would imply that two cases delta y max has to be 0 or cos kl has to be 0 okay this leads to a trivial solution where delta y this gives us delta y to be 0 and this requires that kl must be 2n plus 1 pi by 2 pi by 2 okay where n is n is 0 1 2 and so on okay now from here you get the condition that p critical has to be p critical minimum has to be pi square e i z z by l square 4 l square okay substituting n equal to 0 which is the first mode j for this bond value problem okay you find that the critical load for a cantilever beam is one fourth the critical load of a simply supported beam okay that is the observation okay now let us proceed and 
do it for a statically indeterminate structure ok. Let us do it for a propped cantilever let us assume that I have propped cantilever subject to an axial load P ok. Now this would deform into some shape like this. some shape like that ok, wherein I will uh, now what will happen is even though there are no vertical forces applied you will find that there is a reaction force developed because the sense supports a moment to be developed ok. So, basically that is why I am illustrating it with respect to a indeterminate structure ok. So, I have a P applied now I cut the beam here as before ok, I cut the beam there and draw the free body diagram. I have that, I have a P, I have a P here and I have to have a vertical reaction force B B, let us say this is A and B, I, I should have vertical reaction force B there, there will be a vertical reaction force V B here ok. This is required to enforce the condition that the displacement at B is 0, otherwise there will not be a difference between a cantilever beam and a propped cantilever beam ok. Uh, this is sense is x and the length of the beam is L ok, length of the beam is L this will be L minus x. If delta y as usual this reflection is absolute value of delta y that will be P times delta y, P times absolute value of delta y because this distance is delta y absolute value of delta y ok. Now, the m z moment would be in the clockwise direction because both p into delta y produces a clockwise moment and uh, anti clockwise moment and v b into l minus x which is that distance produces a anti clockwise moment. So, m z would be p into absolute value of delta y plus v b into L minus x ok. So, this is the m z moment ok. Now, I have got the m z moment the procedure remains the same I have to go ahead and solve the differential equation E times i z z d square delta y by d x square is equal to p times delta y is a negative displacement. So, I have minus delta y plus v b into L minus x ok this I can convert back using the standard procedure defining k as square root of p by e i z z as d square delta y by d x square plus k square times delta y equal to v b into l minus x ok. The solution for this differential equation is delta y is C1 cos kx plus C2 sin kx plus Vb into L minus x ok. Now, let us apply the boundary conditions. Now, delta y is C1 cos kx plus C2 sin kx plus v b into l minus x now delta y at x equal to 0 has to be 0 delta y at x equal to l has to be 0 and d delta y by d x at x equal to 0 has to be 0. Now, you have three conditions that is and we have three constants c 1, c 2 and v b which are evaluate from these three conditions ok delta y at x equal to 0 equal to 0 tells us that c 1 plus v b into l must be equal to 0 get this from there. Uh, delta y at x equal to l equal to 0 implies c 1 cos k l plus c 2 sin k l has to be equal to 0 ok and this condition on the derivative tells us that C1 k times C2 
okay minus v b has to be equal to 0 okay. Now from here I get c 1 to be minus v b times l and from here I get c 2 to be v b by k okay. Substituting that in here I get uh, uh, v b into minus cos k l plus sin k l by k allow l here ok by k equal to 0 ok. This implies that either v b has to be equal to 0 identically or minus l times cos k l plus sin k l by k has to be equal to 0 ok. This implies that delta y is identically 0 because of v b is 0, c 1 and c 2 are 0, v b is also 0. So, delta y is 0 which results in a trivial solution this is otherwise or from here I get it as tan k l must be equal to k l ok. Otherwise uh, delta y is given by v b into cos k x into l minus plus uh, sin k x by k plus x minus l no that will be a minus sign here plus x minus l ok. If p critical if p is such that if p is such that tan of k into l minus k l is equal to 0 ok. Solving this equation you can find the p critical value ok I am not going to go into that uh, now ok I will leave it as an exercise for you to do ok to find the p critical value ok. Mm -hmm.